The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. And as you know, we make videos about health and healthcare topics and you can find all sorts of video. All you need to do is search any topic with Dr. Education on YouTube. In English and Hindi, we have both language videos. Today we are going to talk about vaginal itching and discharge. If you have any kind of itching, discharge, through your vagina this is the video which will give you all the information you need so this is particularly for women right so vaginal discharge is a secretion from the vagina and this can be either thick pasty or thin right it might be th either of these three the discharge or it might be clear cloudy sometimes bloody sometimes white yellow or green right or it may be colorless or it might have a bad odor right so itching on the other side uh, on the skin of the vagina and surrounding area which is also called vulva can also be present with this discharge and this can be present as a separate symptom also so what causes itching or discharge see there are glands in the cervix right in the wall of the vagina right which normally produce clear mucus only clear mucus and this is very common that uh, during childbearing age women may actually uh, discharge clear mucus fluid from the vagina which is very normal during the childbirth which is also because of hormonal uh, changes due to estrogen estrogen hormones right so these secretions uh, can also turn white or yellow when they get exposed to air to air all right so this is one thing which you need to remember then the amount of this mucus produced varies during the cycle menstrual cycle right so uh, this is obviously because of hormonal changes that's why during your menstrual cycle there is a lot of changes in your hormones and that's why the amount changes so what actually increases your normal vaginal discharge number one ovulation so the release of the egg from the ovary in the middle of your menstrual cycle on the 14th day all right there at that time the vaginal discharge will increase number two pregnancy and number three sexual excitement if you are sexually excited if you are aroused then your vaginal secretions will increase that's normal now there are different types of infections which can cause itching and they can also cause abnormal discharge from the vagina and abnormal discharge means either brown color or green color yellow or thick white is not abnormal always and abnormal discharge will have a foul or a bad smell bad odor right this can be associated with itching or irritation as well what can cause this problem one if the in infection is spreading through sexual contact sexually transmitted diseases like chlamydia gonorrhea trichomonasis right so these are sexually transmitted diseases which you can have if you had a sexual intercourse unsafe sex basically right then yeast infections fungal infections like uh, yeast itself or it's basically a fungal infection that can be because of unhygienic conditions unhygienic conditions very very sweaty environments that can be there then normal bacteria which live in the vagina can also outgrow and cause a grayish discharge or a fishy odor this is uh, itself is called bacterial vaginosis bv bacterial vaginosis does not is not a sexually transmitted disease it does not spread by sexual contact right this can happen in certain conditions and it's completely treatable right other things are also completely treatable don't worry so what else can cause vaginal discharge and itching menopause 
I mean, when your periods are about to end, if you have very low estrogen levels during that period, this can lead to vaginal dryness also. And uh, that's why you can have itching and other stuff like atrophic vaginitis and therefore sometimes uh, secretions can increase then dryness then itching then secretions can increase something like this can happen then if you actually forgot some tampons or a foreign body inside then also it can cause a foul odor right if you use a tampon then right then chemicals these are which are found in detergents right fabric softeners then some feminine sprays ointments creams douches or even contraceptive foams and jellies or creams right these can have some chemicals which can also irritate the vagina and cause itching and even inflammation around the vagina so you need to think whether you are using some product there which might be leading to these kind of problems and stop using them and try whether your problem can you know gets relieved or not so what can you do and obviously there can be some serious and less likely causes also like cancer yes vaginal vaginal cervical vulval uterine fallopian tube all of these can have cancers in females and females should undergo a cervical uh, pap smear uh, whenever they do a health checkup after the a after certain age right in the us it's done mostly after the age of 18 9 20s uh, especially after getting uh, you know uh, middle age in during the uh, childbearing age they should get or sexually active age they should get this uh, pap smear done right so certain conditions like uh, uh, desquamous desquamative vaginitis or even lichen planus can affect your private parts as well and they they are basically skin conditions and they can also lead to itching so for that you will need to consult a dermatologist so what can you do if you have vaginal itching or vaginal discharge problem so number one uh, let's talk about home care right uh, one you have to keep your genital area clean and dry when you have any kind of itching vaginitis basically make sure to uh, seek help from a doctor whenever you feel it's needed right avoid using soap or any kind of uh, cleansing you know special cream just use water and clean yourself then you can soak uh, in a warm hot bath you can soak uh, sit in a warm warm bath this can also relieve your symptoms and basically you have to dry thoroughly afterwards you have to dry the area thoroughly and rather than using a towel to dry you may find that a gentle uh, you know use of warm or cold air uh, through a hair dryer can as actually result in less irritation than using a towel right so you can use a actual hair dryer to dry that area with a gentle warm or cold air also right then avoid uh, any kind of douching right uh, many women feel that uh, cleaner when they actually douch but it can actually worsen your symptom because it removes healthy bacteria uh, in the line of the vagina so uh, in that case the bacteria is in uh, you know uh, healthy bacteria can actually protect you from infection so you should not douch all the times then other tips avoid using any hygiene sprays fragrances or any powders right talcum powders in the genital areas use pads not tampons use pads do not use any tampons and uh, while you have a uh, infection or uh, while you are on your periods if you have diabetes then keep your blood sugar levels in control that is also an important point then allow more air uh, to reach your genital area and therefore this you obviously you have to wear uh, loose fitting clothes and uh, you and do not wear any panty hoses that's also important wearing cotton underwears is better than synthetic or underwears that has a cotton lining in the crouch can also be helpful cotton increases air flow and therefore decreases the moisture buildup which is good or even you can consider not wearing any underwears
that's also an option to you then girls and women should also know how to properly clean your genital area while bathing and showering then wipe properly after toilet always always wipe from front to back this is important always wipe from front to back because from back you can actually spread infection through the anus into the vagina so that is a very important point front to back not back to front right wash thoroughly before and after using a washroom bathroom also you have to wash thoroughly during the infection always always remember these points and if you are sexually active then practice safe sex use a condom to avoid catching or spreading any infection this is important all right uh, then if you feel that you have severe vaginal discharge you have a lot of pain if fever or pain in the lower belly or if you feel that you are exposed to some sexually transmitted diseases then do not hesitate to talk to a doctor or gynecologist and get investigated this is very very important all right so if you have any sudden change in the amount color odor or consistency of discharge discharge then go to a doctor if there is a lot of redness swelling around the genital area then you should go to a doctor and if you think that certain medicine or certain product which you are using can be the reason for this then still you have to talk to a doctor right this is these are important if you have any blisters any kind of you know uh, fever or symptoms getting worse in spite of uh, taking care of all these home remedies right for at least for one week still you don't get any relief go to a doctor so these are the points when you should go to a doctor or if you have urinary you know burning urination or uh, there is any kind of sign of infection then also you should consult a doctor it's very important and obviously the doctor will do a certain tests physical examination medical history pap smear should be done right vaginal discharge should be sent for microscopy which is called a wet preparation wet preparation which uh, which makes us uh, you know uh, aware what kind of secretion is there whether it is infective or not right then if there is any um, skin lesion that skin lesion or skin uh, biopsy can be done if needed right and cultures can also be done from the cervical areas by taking a swab so that will give us an idea what we are dealing with what the doctor is dealing with what kind of infection there is and treatment will depend upon the symptom the reason right so uh, this is this is the basic which everyone should know about vaginal itching and vaginal discharge if you like the video then don't forget to share it and give me a big thumbs up i am dr paramjeet and you're watching doctor education stay connected and stay healthy